Richard, you made a distinction between very general revelation and specialized uh, ge mm -hmm. uh, general revelation. Could you explain further what you mean? Yeah, that's also different than what most people say, I have to admit. There are a few people that I'm drawing on for those distinctions, but let me see if I can just sort of lay them out. Uh, you know, normally we think you have special revelation and then you have general revelation. That's the normal way you think. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem is, though, is that people want to put a wall between those two, like there's nothing shared between them. There's no overlap. And what I'm arguing for is that there really is an overlap between special and general revelation. And one way to see that is think about what's in the Bible. Let's just deal with special revelation first. The Bible has things in it that we would sort of say are super special that you could never have dreamed. In fact, well, the only way you could have gotten them was a dream. <laughs> you, could, you could never have figured these things out. Right. I mean, when you think about the revelation to John in the book of Revelation with all the fantastic visions he had and that sort of thing, he didn't just sit around one day and say, well, this would be a great idea. Let's do this, okay? Let's think this thought and have that vision. That's very super esoteric, supernatural, super special general revelation, or special revelation, excuse me, super special revelation. On the other end of the Bible, though, you do have things that are not so super, not so specialized. You'll have things like where Paul is writing to the Corinthians, and he's talking about things that he knows that's going on there because he's gotten letters from them. Okay, now that's still the special revelation of God because it's in Scripture. What he is writing is Scripture, but he didn't get that information from a vision. He got it from a letter that he'd received. Or if you take Luke, when Luke tells Theophilus, you know, that I'm writing this account for you by going to all these eyewitnesses, well, he's, he's gotten information and his writing is special revelation because it's Scripture, but his information came from eyewitnesses. And so you have a range of things in the Bible from extraordinary special revelation to rather ordinary special revelation or what we say in the lesson, spe very special revelation to generalized special revelation. So it kind of lowers it down. Doesn't mean it's less authoritative, it just means it's not so supernatural. Okay, well, take that range, and then now let's talk about the range of general revelation. In general revelation, you have very similar things in the sense that some things in general revelation are so well known and so common that practically any mentally competent person in this world would be able to acknowledge it, like the universe is big. Okay, or there's power in the universe, yeah. or the universe is beautiful, or the universe is harsh, those kinds of things. That's so common that you'd have to put it way over here on this very common end, very sort of low end of general, of general revelation. But we also know that there are ways in which God reveals himself in nature that are rather specialized. Um, not everybody has the, all these general experiences. You have your experiences, you have yours, I have mine. Yeah. And that means then that it's still general revelation because it's not the Bible, but it's still God revealing himself to you as an individual. So for example, if you become sick, that is going to be a form of general revelation. You're going to learn things about God, about yourself, about your moral responsibilities from the flu that you have. As strange as that sounds, that's true. And I think we all know we do learn when we get sick. Okay. A lot of people tell me that all the time. You know, I got so sick, I was in the hospital for six weeks, and it was a great time of blessing. I couldn't even read the Bible, but it was a great time of blessing <laughs> because I was learning so much about God from being sick, mm -hmm. from being helpless, from being, uh, you know, worn down, those kinds of things. All right, so that's a very specialized form of individualized form of general revelation. So you have a range in general revelation that sort of parallels the range of special revelation. And that's what causes the overlap. So that the Bible sometimes talks about things that you can also learn from general revelation. Like when the Proverbs talk about ants are busy, they make lots of things. Well, it didn't take a vision to get that. All you had to do was go out and look at an ant hole. Okay, and you can do that too. You don't need a Bible to find out that ants are busy and that they store up food for the winter and things like that. All you have to do is look and see. So there are things like that in the Bible, but also there are things in general revelation that we often don't quite get as specialized when we don't realize that they are, hey, this is my part of general revelation at this moment for me. And so 
we really are saying that God has revealed himself and continues to reveal himself in everything. Everything reveals God. The Bible in a special authoritative way and then general revelation, every single thing else.